Hello friends and welcome back to my homestead. Today I am in my garden because I've decided to, to work uh, pulling out some of the weeds because they're just overtaking everything. And because of all the moisture and all the rains we've had in the last few days and more to come, I need to pull them out just to make more space uh, for the airflow uh, for, the, for the vegetable plants. So, but did you know that many of these weeds, common weeds that grow in your garden, common weeds that you walk through um, in the path in your backyard are edible and not just edible, but are super nutritious, power foods, because they often not just resemble the vegetables that we grow, but they surpass in nutritional value. So today, I want to introduce you to a little patch of weeds that are growing in my backyard in just one little space, but there are a ton of different of them, and I'm going to introduce you to five different uh, edible weeds. So let's start. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Look, that's obviously the cucumbers. They're going to be climbing up the vine there. And here are my potato plants. I have a row of them, uh, but then I have another row of potatoes. Those are my cabbages. But right here in the middle, where there's um, a path in between the rows, there's like so many weeds growing. And I've decided to let them grow a little bit longer so I can show you that they actually are edible and I'm gonna be cooking them tonight for my family's dinner. So in just one little patch, there's a ton of them. Well, I'm gonna introduce you to five. Well, here is one big guy right here in the middle, okay? look how it's getting tall it's probably about 20 inches already maybe even taller and it will get much taller it can get as much as tall as three feet tall and right now it's beginning to make a little pods here in the middle okay little pods here growing and this will turn into this beautiful red uh, deep red color flowers and um, in little seeds and actually can be eaten as Quinoa. So this plant is actually um, an invasive plant, but it is amaranth. And look at this beautiful plant. If you pull it out, some people call it uh, pig's weed. Why? Because when you pull it out, I'm going to pull it out actually right now, if I can. It usually has deep root. Oh, goodness. Come on. Come on. Oh, I broke him. All right. I can't even pull them out. Oh goodness. It has this reddish pink tail, okay? So some people call it pigweed. Look at it, isn't it beautiful? So all of the parts of this plant is edible. Sorry, I broke it all, okay? But I have plenty more to show you, so hold on a second. So uh, the stem has, it's a woody stem but it has some reddish on it. It has leaves that alternate everywhere. And here's the younger leaves. It has beautiful green colors with little veins and the veins are actually a little reddish. Sometimes they're reddish, sometimes they're not. These ones are actually white veins. But when they become more mature, the plant will uh, deepen in color and become more maroonish, okay? And as I've said to you, it produces a ton of these little pods everywhere. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. See that? And this will turn into maroon, reddish maroon color uh, flowers and little seeds. So this guy is packed with a lot of nutrition. So it has uh, carotenoids, proteins, vitamins, minerals, um, minerals such as calcium, magnesium, um, phosphorus, copper, zinc, and iron. So I'm gonna bring him in a house, I'm gonna wash him up, and I'm gonna cook him tonight. Put this guy aside for now, all right? All right, right next to him, well, I made a mess here, but right next to him is this guy. Do you guys know what this guy is? Hmm? It's actually a common purslane. Common purslane, and you will see it growing along the walkways. Look how beautiful it is. It spreads like a, a spider almost, okay? And it has beautiful reddish color stems, and they're very plumpy stems. They're around stems. And then the leaves, 
The leaves are nice shiny green leaves, very plumpy leaves as well. And it's very, very low to the ground. It's literally uh, like crawling on the ground. And I read an article about purslane stating that um, it has better nutrition than many cultivated vegetables that we buy. Um, so again, it's a power of food. It's packed with many, um, many nutritional values. However, people who tend to have kidney stones are not advised to eat it because, um, especially the seeds. So um, yeah, if you have kidney stones, avoid purslane. But purslane can be eaten raw in salads and I'm gonna eat one right now it has um, it has a very pleasant taste it tastes almost like um, little lemony it has a slightly lemony taste to it so I really really like it all right let's move on the next guy I want to show you is called common chickweed and it's growing among all the other plants here so it's kind of hard to tell but it's beautiful light green petals on the thin stems and they grow like like a spider almost because they will spread out everywhere and they will make this tiny little buds in the beginning that will turn into white little flowers they look like stars i think this one is opening hold on a second they're beginning to open white little flowers like stars and they are very mild to taste very pleasant they can be eaten fresh in salads or smoothies or put in like cooking and it holds up to the same uh, nutrition value pretty much as a spinach i would say it has uh, a d c vitamins b complex iron potassium phosphorus magnesium iron uh, silica so it's very nutritious and you can just if you all will make sure you always collect them harvest in a clean environmental place but you can literally rip this out just like this okay and eat them fresh if you're hungry and it has a very very nice uh, taste very mild I know there were studies were done about the benefit of common chickweed in weight loss especially especially if it was related to um, progesterone levels the hormone levels so here it is common chickweed it's a beautiful beautiful invasive plant and we find plenty of it in the spring in the garden all the way through the summer it likes those wet um, soils so right now it's been raining a lot and we have chickweed everywhere so put it in your salad friends it's delicious and now i want to show you the common white clover i know everyone talks about the red clover and how it can be used medicinally but everyone ignores this little guy and look how cute and low to the ground it is so this is white clover with three little leaves it's so so cute and it produces white flowers and it's super low to the ground and they spread like little vine everywhere and they take over they can take over your yard if you let it which we're fine with because my bees love this stuff and my neighbors bees fly here and they absolutely cover my yard and sometimes i come in come out in the morning and i sit and i listen to the buzzing in my yard and it's so so much fun drinking coffee and just uh, getting prepared for the day and listening to the bees. So clover, all parts of the clover, well, especially the greens and the flowers are, are edible. The flowers can be used as decorations, as in uh, on cakes, decorations, in salads, on your plates, but the greens are also edible. These little guys are edible and they can be put fresh in. Uh, oh my goodness, my cat came over to say hello. Buddy, say hi to everybody. Um, and uh, the greens can be eaten fresh in salads and they are wonderful and they have very very mild taste very pleasant so they're not going to overtake uh, the taste of the salad but it's a good addition and it's rich in vitamins A, B, C um, and also they have a lot of minerals such as um, potassium, magnesium, calcium and those are these okay and now let me introduce you to this guy and this one is called lamb's quarters it's a common name called lamb's quarters and it's an interesting plant it can also grow super super tall one year i let one of these guys grow and it has grown 
taller than my daughter who is uh, over five feet tall. So it's kind of funny that it was five and a half, close to six feet tall. And they make a lot of seeds. So be careful. If you let them go into seed, you're going to have lots of seed problem in your garden. A lot of these going to grow everywhere. But they are super delicious and they have very mild taste to them. And again, um, they can be cooked you know put fresh in salads or into smoothies or also they can be put cooking just like spinach yep they have good mild uh, green taste uh, and they similar to spinach taste uh, definitely spinach taste and i know that um they have high amount of vitamin a c they have a lot of fiber calcium copper iron they also have some um, omega-3 and 6 fatty acids so it's about to rain so i need to move fast and i'm gonna bring some of these wild um, weed edibles from my garden that normally would be just discarded and put in the compost pile but i also have plenty of animals who enjoy eating all of these weeds so but i'm gonna bring some in the house and i'm gonna cook with them later on tonight all right, so here is the pile of purslane that I brought home and I washed it and I'm going to be cutting off the roots and I'm going to be cooking it today in my chicken stew and it's going to be perfect, perfect in the stew. Um, okay, so I just wanted to talk to you guys about any time when you go foraging, it's very important that you know what is safe and what is poisonous, noxious, so you really, really need to know and I always recommend uh, to have some sort of book with you when you're going foraging, specific to the area where where you live so in my case I have a uh, small book it's it's a pocket book it's very convenient it's not heavy it can fit in your pocket or in your backpack it's from National uh, Oban Society field guide for New England specifically and I bought it used I mean come on it's okay uh, this one is more um, broad this is also from the National Oban Society field guide to North America wildflowers and again I like it because it has colored pictures and descriptions as well and it will tell you if it's safe if it's not safe um, it's very very important because you can't always rely on internet when you're going hiking at a distant places because it doesn't mean that you're always going to have cell service wherever you're going so on this note friends i hope you stay encouraged to look into wild edibles forage for them or even just forage in your own backyard so be encouraged and try something new